You know, for many of us, driving represents a lot of things. It represents our freedom, it control, competence. But giving up the keys, handing the keys over, can be a very difficult, difficult task. And it's even more difficult, perhaps, having that conversation with the elderly, the loved one in our lives, who maybe it's time that they they step away from behind the wheel. And um, here to talk about some information on this sensitive subject is Amy Huddleston. She's with um, Home Instead Senior Care. Hi, Amy. Hi. This is uh, this is not a conversation that you kind of think even see coming, and then it's here, and then you're like, how do I do this, and what's the right way to do it, and how to go about it. It's very delicate to talk about, obviously, because it creates a lot of different emotions in seniors when you bring up that sensitive topic. Yeah, to say, you no, know, you can't, you know, some people want to just say, I'm taking them from you, and that's it. You're not going to be out driving, which is not the way to go about it. That is correct. You no, know, um, we, you have a video that you mm -hmm. brought along that shows how this conversation may go for some people. Take a look. Look, you're not in trouble and we're not angry. We just need to talk to you about your driving. This is the second time you've come home with a big dent in the car. We're worried about you, and we don't want to see you get hurt. That's right. It just wouldn't be responsible for us to ignore this. It's because we love you, Mom. Yeah. yeah. It looked exactly like my parents did sitting there. That is the look. Exactly the look, I thought. Like, yeah, right, that's not going to happen. It is. And that, same with Dad, you know, before he passed. And he was just like, nope. It was a point of pride. It was really his, what he, he was a man. Pride. Like we, right. Pride mm -hmm. for him. So how, and do children, uh, do, do we talk to our parents about this? Is that a common thing? 95% of people are not talking to their parents about driving. So Woo, I'm in the, I'm what, in the, po I'm in the popular. Well, it, it's an interesting topic because when you think about with teenagers, we have no problem talking to them about safe driving and getting on the road, but it's such a sensitive subject to talk about getting off the road yeah. because it's such a threat of independence mm -hmm. and creates mm -hmm. a lot of different emotion for them when they're being asked you need to possibly hang up your keys. Well, it's, it, it was hard for me to ask my mom because my mom gave me those big, you know, brown eyes and I felt sorry for her because she had one small fender bender and that was a sign for me she needs to have the keys taken away. But I, I hesitated because I did, I wanted her to have still her dignity and her freedom, but I feel guilty because then she got into another accident. And at one point, I had to say, Mama, you know, you're going to kill somebody or something's going to happen to you. So I had to take it away. But I felt guilty doing it. You did. But there's sometimes when you have to step in like that, when you know that it there's danger to her or to potentially people on the road, you're going to have to make that tough decision to say, Mom, I'm going to take the keys. Yeah, she didn't care. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, yeah. but they can be stubborn. Yeah. They can be stubborn. Yeah. But Amy, t what are some signs? Like, what should we be looking for? Well, I think you first need to look at that. You know, the main things that we need to have to be a safe driver is you yeah. need good vision. You need to be able to have good cognitive ability to understand the rules of the road and the reaction time. So physically, you know, sometimes arthritis gets bad in their neck. They can't turn their heads anymore. Their peripheral vision isn't as strong due to macular degeneration or the reaction to the and when you're using the gas and the brake. Exactly. Right. So you have multiple, I mean, I think when you're looking at just looking at my, my parents and their physical condition, let's consider how's their vision, how is their cognitive ability, right. mm -hmm. and physically, do you feel like they can sit in the car safely and react and do what they need? But you to know do. they have to get tested to get their license, mm -hmm. right? That is correct. I mean, that was, Ken, that, that was your situation, Well, my, right? my great aunt, is she, she had passed her test, but it had been a little while. She was 99 and kept driving. She was oh going God. to work. She'd been working the same place since she was 16. So finally what my parents wow. had to do, what we said that the car needed to be tuned. We brought it into the shop, said, oh, they're going to have to keep it. They have to order parts, start taking a taxi. We'll let you know when the car's ready. And at 99, my aunt actually forgot that she had a car. She lived for like <laughs> another four years and still went to work in the taxi. Wow. But it was like basically deceiving them. So oh, I don't like, no. how, what's the right way to do it? Obviously, that yeah. isn't, luckily, she, well, yeah, Amy, how, what's the right you're way? You're the expert. How do we have that conversation? I think yeah. the right way, you know, just just as you were saying, though, if, if it's, a, you know, an issue where you know it's they're in danger, you have have to step in and make that call. If it's not though, you really have to remember, you know, these people are still, we're still people. You have to treat them with dignity. You yeah. want to include them in this conversation. You need to say to them, how are you feeling on the road? 
Mm -hmm. Because you might be surprised what you hear. They may say, you know what, I'm not seeing as well at night. I think I'm going to stop yeah. driving at night. So you slow down yeah. the process. Right. You don't have to necessarily stop it right away. With You can't drive anymore. But let's figure out maybe you shouldn't drive during when the roads are really busy. Or you shouldn't drive at night. You're just going to drive to the store that's and a mile away. And they're part away. of that decision making. Exactly. They're part of it. Right. You have to include them and make them feel like, you know what, I am okay with making this decision. It's a much more pleasant conversation when you include them and treat them with dignity, right. take into consideration their feelings, because you know it's not an easy topic to well, discuss. My, my I find the, the males a little more difficult than yeah. the females. My dad got so angry sure. with me that when I finally took the keys away, that he never spoke to me. Oh again. my goodness. We spoke but, in the hospital, but he was so mad at me. He was so angry. Yeah, that, well, he, yeah, yeah I, I guess it's yeah. going, knowing what they're going through, but what do you, for services like Home and Set Senior Care, what do you guys suggest? What do you yeah. offer? What areas there? So what we offer is one of the things we provide is transportation. But, you know, the thing that's most important to us at Home Instead is treating our clients with dignity and enhancing the lives of the seniors we take care of as well as their caregivers because we know this is not an easy time in their lives. Sure. And we've got wonderful caregivers. You will not find better hired and trained caregivers that will come in and provide the companionship services, will provide transportation, but also dementia, advanced yeah. Alzheimer's yeah. care, um, ALS, uh, like ALS yes, yes. Like My father was not old. My father was only 70 years old. But because of the ALS and he started to advance with the disease, he, you know, but his brain was still, his brain was 100 percent, right? but his hands weren't and his feet weren't. And I finally said, Dad, you got to give me the keys. And it was difficult for him. Yeah, to do that. yeah it, it is very difficult. Sometimes it just becomes down to the it's the disease. And you need to say, Dad, it's not you. It's the disease. It's the disease. And having a trained professional there. Yeah. That's great. Yes. But it's also I never thought of this because when you take the keys away, they still need to get to where they're right. going. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And you so, can't always do it because mm -hmm. you're working right. or you've got children to take care and of. And if you hire like a ta like who knows if that taxi driver knows what to do. Exactly. They're not trained right. in case yeah. Goes wrong. So, so a caregiver stays with that. you, takes you to appointments, yeah. but you also That's can great. work with family, you work with friends, you help them yeah. still be a part of community and get them where they need to be.